Did you know if you could grow weeds, you can grow wildflowers? Sowing wildflower seeds is all about timing, easy soil prep, and I'll show you the steps to success for the best blooms this spring and summer. The best time to sow wildflower seeds will just depend on your growing climate. Fall is an excellent choice for areas that have freezing winters, the freezing and thawing that last for more than 60 days. Now that freezing and thawing really helps crack the seed coating that's on wildflower seeds that tends to be extra hard. And that helps them to germinate a lot better come springtime. You don't want to sow your seeds too early in the season because they could germinate and a hard freeze will kill off those tender seedlings. I like to wait until we have two to three hard freezes before I sow my wildflower seeds. At this point, the soil temperatures are usually 45 degrees or lower and that keeps those seeds from germinating. It works like a charm every time. If you live in an area that's warm and you don't experience the freezing winters, then January and February are the better times to be planting your wildflower seeds. Now you'll have to think ahead just a little bit because you don't have those freezing temperatures and you'll want to emulate winter. So you'll want to stratify your seeds and that just means put them in the freezer for about a month. That just kind of helps those to germinate a lot better when it's time. Wildflower seeds will germinate much better if they're given a site where they don't have to compete with weeds and other plants for nutrients, water, and especially sunlight. We know that weeds are very vigorous, so by removing them, this will give your wildflowers a better chance to establish a good root system and thrive. When I've sowed seed in this bed here that already has some existing plants, most of them don't germinate. However, on the edges where there isn't anything, that's where they're gonna germinate. So you can see that sowing in an open space is definitely better for your wildflower seeds. Wildflowers love sunshine. So pick a site that has at least six hours of sun a day. More is definitely better. Now, if you don't have a spot that has enough sunshine, you can grow some wildflowers that are more suited for the shade areas. They're usually more muted in color, not as vibrant as our beautiful ones that grow in the sun, but still beautiful. Once you've picked your sunny location and you've removed all of the vegetative growth, you'll want to loosen up the soil. This just helps those seeds get really good contact with the soil. It gives them a better start, a better root hold. Plus it gives them some nooks and crannies that they can kind of lodge in so that the wind doesn't blow them away. I like to reserve a spot in my vegetable garden each year for wildflowers to be sown. I love the splash of color, plus it just offers a little bit of a spot for our beneficial insects to hide and also some nectar for them to feed on. Follow each seed packet's sowing rate directions. Each variety is sown at a different rate. And by sowing too densely won't give you more flowers. It'll actually create competition and create the opposite effect. If you've collected your own seed like I did here, this showy milkweed, you can see that it's super light and the seed pods are still attached to this like little hair-like um, substance that will actually fly away. So I'll need to remove this seed from these little puff balls so that they'll actually stay put. And there are no directions on the rate to sow these. So just try to sow the seed about two to three inches apart. If you tend to be a little heavy handed with sowing your seed, you can actually mix it with 50% sand and 50% seed. That helps you distribute the seed a little bit more evenly. So just take some dry sand, mix the two together, and then you can just sow your seed. And that just kind of thins it out just a little bit more. A lot of times you'll buy mixes that already have some inert ingredient that just helps you to sow the seed just a little bit thinner. Like this one here just has some rice holes in it. Sprinkle your seed over the prepared soil. Now remember, the only thing we did was loosen the soil. We didn't add any compost or fertilizer to this because wildflower seeds, they grow out in the wild and they don't have all of these elements that help them grow. So they're gonna be just fine without any of this. So we'll just sprinkle the seed over the area at the right application rate. And if you've got a large area, you may wanna go over in one direction and then come back and go in the other direction. Once you're done sprinkling the seeds, then we need to tamp those soils down so that they have good contact. You can do this with the back of a rake, a tamper if you have one, or even walk on the soil. Don't cover your seed. Most wildflower seeds need light to germinate. It's how it works in nature. They mature, create a flower, develop a seed pod, and then drop to the ground, while others just get blown away. Once I've sown my seed, I like to sprinkle them with a little bit of water. That just helps them stick into the soil. If you live in an area that you get plenty of rain, you may not need to. And this is something that if your soil is moist, you may not have to as well. 
At this point, I just let nature take its course until springtime. I wait until I start to see their little heads emerge, and then I might give them some water if we haven't had any precipitation. But wildflowers are really drought resistant and do better if they don't get too much water. So even in the hot of the summer, I might water them once a week or every other week. They'll kind of tell you what they need. Now it's time to just wait and watch for your wildflowers to bloom in the spring and the summertime. Collect the seed or just let it drop to the ground for years to come. Till next time, see ya. What's up, Buttercup? I'm just waiting for the wildflowers to come up. Oh, great, I'll see you in the spring. I'm taking the cat in. Forget me not.